guys. So, this is problem number 52 from chapter 4. And um, we have a circuit, and it looks like this. At this, over here we have a 20 volt independent voltage source. Sorry. Um, so over here we have a 20 volt voltage source, a 100 ohm resistor, 200 ohms resistor there, um, a 200 milliamp independent voltage source. Sorry, I got a text and I always have to check it because in case the school is calling me to go pick up my son and that's not the case. But I'm always going to check my text even if I'm filming. So a 200 milliamp independent voltage source there. 500 ohms and a 0.4, a um, dependent voltage source there with a value of 0.4 VA. And VA is this voltage drop across the 250 ohm resistor. 250 ohms resistor here, a dependent current source with value 0.003 V delta. And V delta is the um, voltage drop across the 500 ohm resistor. And the first part of the problem asks, is kind of an opinion question. They said, which one do you prefer? Do you prefer the mesh method or the node voltage method? Um, that's just an opinion question, so there's really no right or wrong answer. I believe this problem can be solved either way, although one way is a lot harder, and I didn't bother with it. So we'll get we'll come back to that in just a second. Second part of the question is um, what is the power as dissipated by that 20 volt resistor? So let's get started. When I initially looked at this problem, I said, oh, I saw this current right here going through this mesh, and I was like, oh, super. So, so this is going to be a mesh method. So then I began to set up my mesh e um, equations. I said, okay, so this is going to be IA, some IA. This is going to be um, some IB, and this is going to be some IC, and this here is going to be um, 0.003 V delta. That will be that current. And then so some so 0 0.003 V delta plus the IB has to equal 200 milliamps. So I was like, okay, great. I have enough equations. I have enough unknowns. The problem is I had no problems with this setting up this equation. Then when I got to here, I realized that this independent voltage source has some unknown voltage drop. So I accounted that for that by VX. And then, um, so I was like, okay, great. So I just introduced a new variable, but I have a constraint equation, so I'll, I'll still have five, five equations. So I went happily along my way over to this, set up this equation, this mesh, no problem. When I got to here, well, this independent voltage source has some unknown voltage drop. Um, remember, this 0.003 V delta tells me the value of the current, but it doesn't tell me what voltage drop that current independent current source has. I have to find that, so then I had to call that Vy, and then suddenly I didn't easily have enough equations for all the unknowns that I was introducing for the mesh method. So I was like, eh, I don't want to try too much harder. So I was like, let's see if no voltage will be a little bit easier. And it ended up being a lot easier, thanks to two super nodes, and I'll explain that in just a second. But let's go ahead and um, identify our nodes. So a node is a point where two or more circuit elements meet. So we've got a node here, we have a node here, we have a node here, we have a node here, and we have a ground node. And I'm going to pick this to be my ground. So the diagram tells me two nodes, or names two nodes for me. Here they said, well this is VA. And here they told me, well this is V delta, right? So then I said, okay, so that's A, a D, so I'm just going to call this V, B, and V, C for, to complete the alphabet. Over here, I call this V, C. <coughs> now, I start building my node equations. So, at this node here, I was like, okay, well, this is V, B over 100. Is that node? And then over here, I have this current is going away from that node, so it's got to be 
minus, or plus, excuse me, plus point zero point zero zero three V delta. And then here, um, that's, I never really think about um, my equations in advance. I just kind of do them and then let the conclusions lead me to where the conclusions lead me. And then, then I realize I have two voltages and then another voltage in between, no resistance. When everything you have in your line of sight is nothing but voltages, you have a supernode. So then I realized I have a supernode. And supernodes make your life super easy because all you do is you write the equations there and then you jump to the very next node in the supernode and start continue your equation and the, until you're done. And obviously the branch that has nothing but voltages is not going to be a node where you write um, a current equation. You just it's a continuation, so you continue to the next node to write, continue writing your um, current, um, your currents. Remember what KCL is or what the node voltage method is. Don't lose sight of that. The node voltage, the node voltage method, is basically Kirchhoff's current law, and it says that the sum of all the currents out of a node must equal zero. So that is the heart of this method. So here we have VB over 100, and then we realize that, oh, I have nothing but voltages. I have a supernode. So um, then, we have, then you have to look at what is this value. Right here, VA, right? VA is just point on VA. The, the diagram gives that to us. The um, author or the, um, the customer says, I want this to be VA. And then you, as an engineer, say, well, if this is VA, then VB must be something else. Well, VB is got to be the sum of um, VA and 20 volts because, um, because that's what's happening in between, right? So what is VB then, really? Well, what's happening on your, when you go from here to here? First, you have VA. Well, on your trip over here, you're an electron happily going from here to here. First, you're at positive voltage to potential, then you go from negative. If you go from positive to negative, for sure you went down in voltage potential. If you went down in voltage potential, it must be a minus. So therefore, you decreased by 20 on your trip from here to VB. So therefore, VB must be VA minus 20 volts. So instead of VB, I'm going to get rid of that extra variable. And substitute that with VA minus 20 volts. So that's now VA minus 20 volts over 100 plus 0.003V delta. And now I have a supernode, which means um, I can continue to the next, next node and continue to write my um, KCL equation. So here I've got VA, this branch, and obviously this branch is just a supernode. There is no KCL equation. So here, we have, um, continuing on, so we have VA over 250. And then over here, this is an independent current source with value 200 milliamp. And the convention, the, since KCL says the sum of all, uh, KCL defines currents away from the node as positive, so currents into the node is negative. So this is going to be minus 200 milliamps equals zero. That's equation number one. Now, we go to this node here, this V delta node. Um, actually, before I do that, since I don't have much board space, I'm going to simplify it for you. I'm not going to go through these steps, but um, this is all going to simplify into my number one equation that I need. And this simplifies to 0.014 VA minus um, plus 0.003 V delta, that's equal to 0.4. That's the first equation that I have. Um, box that off. So equation number one is 0.014 VA plus 0.003 V delta is equal to 0.4. All right, now I can erase this and go to my V delta node. So my V delta node, the first current in this branch is 200 milliamps leaving it. So that's going to be 200 milliamps. 
And then here I have V delta over 500, so plus V delta over 500. And then here, again, I have a situation where I have a dependent voltage source of 0.4 VA. So, so now that means they told me this is V delta. So my customer told me that's got to be V delta value. So that means this has got to be something else. That something else has to be the sum of all the voltages that it sees downstream. So let's see what's happening when the voltage goes from here to the destination. It starts with V delta. Then it goes to minus and then it goes to plus. It went up in voltage potential because first you had minus and then you had plus, right? So if something goes up in voltage potential, it for sure increased. So I can say for sure that VC is really V delta plus 0.4 VA. Okay? So now I'm going, instead of VC, I, so all these super nodes are really helping me out. Um, because I keep eliminating the need for more equations. So now, um, instead of VC, I've got just two unknowns. So this is a super node, which means I can jump to the next node and then just continue to write my node voltage equation. So at this node, I've got V delta plus 0.4 VA over 200. And this current, this 0 0.003 point, um, V delta is going into that node, so that's going to be a minus, minus 0 0.003 V delta. All of that equals zero. And all of that should simplify to be 0 0.004 V delta plus 0 0.002 VA is equal to negative 200 milliamps. This is the second equation that I need, and I only have two unknowns. So I have two equations and two unknowns. Plug that into your simultaneous equation solver, and you should come up with VA is equal to um, 44 volts. And V delta is equal to negative 72 volts. So we needed that information because the second part of the problem asks what is um, the voltage or the power dissipated by the 20 volt voltage source? Well, power is voltage times current. So we know what the voltage is. We need the current. So to solve for the current, we will use KCL. So we know this current, this current, and this current must equal zero. I'm going to call that current I sub x. And that's the current I'm looking for. Ix plus Va, which is actually 44. So 44 over 250. And then this is the current going in there, minus 200 milliamps. That's equal to zero. When you solve for that, you should find that I sub x is equal to um, 24 milliamps. So I sub x is 24 milliamps. So power dissipated by 20 volts is going to be 20 volts times 24 milliamps. And that will be 480 milliwatts. And that is the answer to part 52. So remember, if you got help, make sure that you help give help back. Either answer other people's questions or share the video so that your classmates, who are probably confused by the same problem that you're confused with, share it with them so that maybe they can get some help and some clarification. And also, it doesn't hurt to have dis people discover the channel because um, the more people know about it, maybe the more people will contribute. At least that's a theory. Alright, have a great day, guys.